Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be going over my favorite features and shortcuts in Sublime Text. So Sublime Text is the editor that I use in most of my videos, and I get tons of questions about how I'm doing certain things or what features I'm using. So we'll cover my favorites here. Uh, now, learning how to use the features and shortcuts of the editor that you're using can definitely help you be more productive and get things done more quickly. Now, this video will be for Sublime Text on the Windows operating system. Now, if you're on a Mac, then I do have a video for that as well. So I'll put a link to that in the description section below. I was going to try to do this as one single video, but the shortcuts are so different for each operating system that it was best just to split those into separate videos. Okay, so the features that we're going to go over in this video uh, will be features that will be available on the default installation of Sublime Text. So you won't need any of the packages that I have installed with my installation. Uh, but if you are curious about what packages and setup I'm using, then I do have a separate video on that as well. So I'll also put a link to that in the description section below also. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, the feature that I use the most and the one that I get asked about the most is the multi-cursor functionality. So I use this in a lot of my videos to speed up certain things, but I use it all the time in my daily coding as well. So this is also what we'll spend the most time on because there are a lot of different ways to use this. So for people who don't know what this is, it's a way to have multiple cursors at once. Now, at first that might not sound useful, but let's look at some examples and see why this is so awesome. So I have a blank HTML file open here. Uh, so let's say that we wanted to write some sample HTML code to put into a project. Uh, so for example, we're just gonna create an unordered list with 10 different items. So I'm gonna create an unordered list by hitting UL and then hitting tab. And now we want 10 list items. And let's say that within those list items, we wanted each one to be an H1 tag. Uh, so we could just create one list item and then copy and paste that 10 times, or we can use multiple cursors to just type them all at once. So to do this, I'm gonna hit enter and make 10 blank lines here. So we already have one line, so I'll make nine more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we have 10 blank lines. And now I'll create a new cursor on each line by clicking on the first line here. And I'm just gonna make sure that that's untabbed. Uh, and now I'm gonna hold down control and just click on each spot that I want another cursor. So I'm holding down control and just clicking on these other lines. And you can see that it's creating multiple cursors here. And once we have those cursors in place, then we could just start typing and it will type that content in all of those cursor locations. So if I type out a list item, so LI and then hit tab, creates the list item. And now I can create an H1 tag by hitting H1 and pressing tab. And that completes that. And now I can just fill this in with some dummy text. So I'll just put test there. Okay, so now you can see that we have 10 list items fully complete. Uh, so we can see that it just typed out multiple lines for us at once. So using that control click is one way to get multiple cursors. Now, another use case for this would be if we wanted to edit something in multiple places. So for example, let's say that we wanted to change all of the H1 tags in this list to be H2 tags. Now, you might be thinking that you can just do a standard find and replace all. And in this example, you could, uh, but a shortcut for this, if I just select the first H1 here, if I have my uh, cursor here within the first H1 and then had hit Alt, uh, F3, then you can see that that highlights all of our H1 tags for editing. So now we can just simply change those to H2 and save that. So that changes all of the instances of the H1 tags. But in a larger document, you might have some other H1 tags outside of this list that you don't wanna change. So simply highlighting and changing all of them might not be exactly what you want. Uh, so let's change these back to H1. So I'm just going to undo that change. So now let's look at an example where we're gonna to wanna to be a little more selective. Um, so let's say that we just wanna change certain H1 tags. So let's change the last five H1 tags to be H2 tags. Now, one way that we could do this would be by uh, clicking where we wanna start. So that would be right here. And then just holding down control and double clicking uh, all of these instances that we wanna change. But going through and clicking like that might take a while. And there's actually a shortcut that we can use that will highlight the next match for us. So if I just click the first one here, uh, now our cursor is within that H1 tag. And now let's just hit control D and then keep hitting control D and it'll highlight the next H1. So whatever you have highlighted, hitting control D will highlight that next match for you so that you can uh, make multiple changes at once. So now we went all the way to the bottom here. If I was to hit control D again, then it would cycle back up to the top, but we don't wanna do that. So now I'm just going to uh, change those last five to H2 tags. 
So we can see that we can use those multiple cursors to only change those where we want. Um, okay, now another awesome thing that we can do with multiple cursors is to copy and paste multiple things at once. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Uh, well, for example, I have a snippets file open here, and let me open this up. It's got a few different lines, and we can see that we have 10 items here on different lists. Uh, so let's say that we want these items to be the text that is inside of our HTML list items. Uh, so how could we do this? Well, some people might just copy and paste one item at a time back and forth, uh, but that would take a really long time, especially if our list was a lot uh, larger. Uh, so instead, let's just highlight all of these at once and then copy those and paste them. So I'm going to do a control click at the end of each of these lines, which we saw before will create a cursor at the end of each of these lines. So I'm just going through and control clicking down on each of these items. And now I'm gonna highlight all of this uh, by holding in control shift and then hitting my left arrow. And I'm just going to uh, do that multiple times until I get back to the beginning of the line. And now once we have everything highlighted, Let's copy this by hitting Control C and now going back to our HTML. And now back in our list, let's highlight the 10 locations that we want to change. And I'll do that just by clicking uh, on the first test here and then pressing Control D like we did before and just highlight all of these. So I will just highlight down all the way to the bottom. And now that we have all 10 of these highlighted, then we can simply paste in what we copied by pressing Control V. Uh, so we can see that it pastes in all of that information into those 10 locations. So that pastes our 10 copied items into 10 different locations. Now when you copy and paste multiple, multiple items like this, uh, you have to have the same number of cursors that you use to copy uh, in order to paste. So if you don't, then it will paste in all of those items and that can be pretty ugly. Uh, so what I mean by that, let me just show you what I mean. So I'll come down here to the bottom and create a few blank lines here. Now I'm gonna just create two cursors. Now remember we have 10 items copied uh, but only two cursors here. So now if I paste this in, then it's just gonna paste all 10 of those items uh, on those two uh, cursors. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, maybe that's what you want, uh, but maybe it's not. So if you have 10 cursors, then it's just gonna paste uh, all 10 of those items one time, just like it did up here in our list. So now I will remove that and go back to our list here. So this multi-cursor copy and paste trick has saved me a ton of time, more times than I can count. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, now, another thing that I use this for is to split things out and make them more readable. Uh, so for example, uh, let me go back to my snippets file here. If I scroll down here to the bottom, so this is a real example of what my path environment variable looks like on my Mac and Linux machines. Now, if you don't know what this is, then don't worry about it. It's just basically a list of directories on your machine where your terminal looks for commands. Um, now, all of these directories are separated by colons. So that's not really readable right now, especially if you have a lot more directories added to it than this. So let's say that I wanted to split these up onto different lines so that I could read this a little better. So to do this, I can just simply highlight the first colon here, and now I'm just going to press Control D until I highlight uh, all the way up until the last colon, and now I'm just going to simply hit Enter. And we can see that it replaced all of those colons with a new line and split all of these directories up onto their own lines, that, and that makes it a lot more readable. Um, okay, so now that we saw a few examples of using this in HTML, let's look at a quick example of how you might use this in Python. So we'll just do a quick overview of a few tricks that we just learned. Uh, so I have a Python script opened up here, so let me switch to that. So this script here is from my object-oriented video where we started learning about classes and manually setting attributes. Now this is actually a mistake that I made in that video. So if you look here, then I created my employee one object and an employee two object, and then I'm manually setting attributes on both of those here. Now for the second group of attributes here, I accidentally set them on employee one again. So all of these actually should be employee two here. Um, so we could go through and manually fix those, or we can simply use multi-cursors to just click on employee one here at the top, then press control D until we highlight the four that we wanna change. Now remember, we don't wanna change all of the employee ones, just the ones in the second group. So that's why control D is so useful. Once we have all those highlighted, then we can just go to the end here, uh, delete that one, make that a two, save it, and we're done. Okay, and now let's say that our boss comes in and tells us that this EMP1 
variable name isn't descriptive enough. Uh, so we need to change that to something more descriptive. So we want to change EMP1 and EMP2 to be employee1 and employee2. And in this case, since we want to change them all, then we can simply highlight uh, one of these here. So I'll just highlight the top one. And then I will press Alt and then F3 to highlight all of those EMP variable names. And to change all of them all at once, I will just go to where we want to make the addition and type that in. And you can see it's typing at all of those cursor locations and changing them all. And then we can save that. So now we can see that all of those were changed. Okay, so that is a look at the multi-cursor functionality in Sublime Text. Now that is by far my favorite feature in Sublime. Now this is also becoming more popular in other editors as well. So if you're not using Sublime Text, then check if the editor that you are using uh, has multi-cursor functionality and start using it if you can because it'll save you a ton of time. Um, okay, so now let's look at some more features and shortcuts that I use a lot within Sublime. So one feature that I use all the time is switching between tabs and creating multiple panes. Uh, so first of all, we can see that we already have multiple tabs open here with multiple files open. So to switch through these with a keyboard shortcut, we can use control tab and control tab will move to the next tab and control shift tab will move to the previous tab. Now, if we want to uh, close a tab, then we can hit Control W, and we can see that that, cl uh, that that tab that we were on closed down. Now, if we accidentally close a tab and we want to reopen a closed tab, then we can hit uh, Control Shift T, and it will reopen the tab that we closed. Now, if any of you are Google Chrome users, then that should be familiar to you because it's the same keyboard shortcuts for Chrome tabs also. And I'm glad that Sublime uses those familiar shortcuts. Um, okay, so now that we've looked at tabs, now let's look at how to set up multiple panels. Now, this is something that I also use a lot, especially when I'm doing something like web development where I wanna be able to see the HTML and CSS at the same time, or maybe, uh, you know, maybe look at a Django or Flask view and a template at the same time or anything like that. So there are a lot of different panel layouts that we can use. So if we hit Alt, Shift, and 2, then we can see that it creates uh, and opens two panels side by side and a column layout. And we can drag any tab that we want into this panel so that we can see both of these at once. So now I can see the HTML um, file here uh, along with the snippets file here. Now, if we hit Alt, Shift, and 3, then it'll open up uh, three panels in a column layout, and then we can look at three files at once. Now, with the word wrap here and the text so large, it's getting all scrunched together, uh, but usually I have the text a lot smaller than this. So this three column layout is extremely useful if you're working on something like front end code and you wanna see your HTML, JavaScript, and CSS all at the same time. Um, okay, now we can also hit Alt, Shift, and 4, and that'll open up four columns. Now I feel like this starts to get a little crowded and a little less practical, unless you have a really big monitor. Uh, but some people find it useful. Uh, now we can also hit Alt, Shift, and Five, and it will split our four panels into a grid. So instead of that four column layout, now we have uh, two columns and two rows. Um, now I feel like this would be a little more practical on a large monitor, but still, I don't really use the four panels very often. I use the uh, two panels a lot and the three panels uh, a little bit also. Um, now we can also hit uh, Alt Shift 8, and that'll just open up two rows if you prefer uh, them stacked one on top of another rather than side by side. And to get back to our single window, then we can simply just hit Alt Shift and 1, and it'll take us back to that single window. Okay, so another nice quick shortcut that I like in Sublime Text is being able to move lines around using Control Shift and then the up and down arrows. So let me show you this by going back to our sample HTML here. So let's say that we wanted to move a few of these items around. So instead of copying and pasting them all around, uh, we can simply click on the line that we want to move and then hold in Control Shift and then use the up and down arrows uh, to move this around where we want. So we can see I'm moving it up to the top of the list now, uh, and if I hit the down arrow, it moves it to the bottom. So if we wanted to reverse this whole list, then I could simply uh, click on the first item and hold Control Shift, uh, use the arrows to move it down, and then just do this for every item uh, in the list, and pretty soon we will have the whole thing reversed. And then switch to five and six and that reversed our list. So that would have taken a lot longer if we were to uh, copy and paste everything. 
Okay, so the rest of these features that we're going to look at are just going to be real quick uh, keyboard shortcuts. Um, so first of all, in my videos, I'll often run Python code using Sublime Text. So Sublime has some built-in build systems where uh, it will try to run the code of whatever language you're using. So let me open up my sandbox uh, Python file here, and I will close that. And we can see that we have a print statement here at the bottom of the file. So the keyboard shortcut for running code in Sublime Text is Control B. So if I press Control B, then we can see that it runs that code and prints out that first employee's email. Now by default, Sublime will try to guess how you want to run certain code, but if you're using different versions of Python or anything like that, then I have a separate video on Sublime build systems showing how you can set those up exactly how you want. Um, okay, so another thing that I do a lot uh, when I've opened a directory is to get some more screen space uh, and collapse the sidebar. So first of all, let me close this bottom panel here where we ran our code. And to do that, we just press escape. And now I want to collapse this sidebar to get more screen space. So to collapse that, I can just hold down control and then press K and then B. And you wanna hold down control the whole time when you're pressing both of those buttons. So again, I'm gonna hold down control and open this sidebar again and then uh, press K and then B while holding down control and it opens that back up. So that's a nice quick keyboard shortcut uh, to collapse that and pull it back up when you want it. Okay, so something else that I use a lot is the keyboard shortcut for commenting code. And to do that, you can use control forward slash. And this works for multiple languages as well. So over here in my HTML, if I wanna comment out uh, these last five items here, then I can just highlight those, then press control forward slash, and we can see that it comments out those last five items there. And if I wanna do this in Python, then I can come in and click on a line and press control forward slash and it'll comment out one line or I can highlight multiple lines, press control forward slash and it comments out all of those lines at once. So we can see that the syntax uh, for comments in HTML and Python uh, both have different ways of commenting their code and Sublime uh, adds those in correctly automatically for each language, so that's really useful. Okay, so lastly, another one of my favorite features with Sublime is the command palette. Now you can open the command palette by pressing Control Shift P and uh, that will open up the command palette. Now the command palette uh, allows you to do a few different things like uh, setting different syntaxes and things like that. But the best thing that you can do is install new packages. And packages allow you to add functionality that currently isn't in Sublime. Uh, so for example, you may have noticed that my HTML has been uh, auto formatting throughout the video. And that is an HTML package uh, that auto formats your code for you. And you can also install packages that make visual changes as well. Uh, so it gives you different color schemes and different themes and things like that also. Now, I've already done a video on the packages and other preferences that I have set in my Sublime Text, so I won't go into details in this video, but I will put a link to that video in the description section below if anyone is interested. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful and learned some new things about Sublime Text. Uh, I get a lot of comments asking about these features, uh, so hopefully this cleared up any questions that anyone would have. Uh, now, if you have any favorite features or shortcuts that I didn't mention in this video, then feel free to leave a comment and let me know about it. Uh, so if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.